Good afternoon, this is Data Pioneer from the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and today I've got a treat for you. Today uh, we're going to take a look at a Pop OS 1910 Linux distribution just released by System76. I want to show it to you and I want to get right into it. So let's go ahead and take a look at Pop OS 1910 just released from System76. Take a look at it. Come join me. Okay, I'm in my VirtualBox 6.0 manager. Let's go ahead and set up Pop OS 1910. Click on Machine and New. And um, go out here and um, I'm going to call it Pop underscore OS 1910. And um, it's based on Linux. Uh, and it's actually based on uh, Debian 64 bit. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And um, I'm going to give this thing. Um, Let's see, I'll probably give it uh, 4096 megabytes, which is 4 gigs of RAM. Click Create. Uh, let's give this thing uh, 32 gigabytes of uh, allocated VDI uh, virtual disk image space. And uh, now let's click the settings after we've created it. And I'll go out here and uh, on system, I need to untick the floppy drive. Select hard drive and bump it up so that when we reboot it comes to the hard drive after installation. Display, let's give it 128 megabytes of memory. Let's select the VBOX VGA under storage. I'm going to click the empty CD-ROM and select the virtual optical disk file. Uh, go out on my F drive where I have downloaded Pop OS 1910 AMD 64 ISO. Select that audio, I want to make sure that's uh, activated, it is. Click Network uh, under Adapter 1, change it from NAT to Bridged Adapter and um, select USB and USB 3.0, click OK and we're ready to launch this thing, so I'm going to go ahead and click Start and um, as soon as it comes up I'm going to do the usual here by clicking View and going uh, full screen all right, so full screen mode and uh, and let it start booting up. And it's going to boot up to the installer. And then we'll go ahead and uh, get this thing started. Pop OS um, is something I it's a, it's a distro based on uh, Debian and Ubuntu. I've used it before. Um, I've not used 19.10, but I'm setting it up in a VM now to uh, give it a, a try to see uh, you know what changes have been made and make sure it's uh, what I remember it to be. I remember it to be a very good distribution of Linux by the way. A very solid. Here it comes and here we are. We're at the uh, installer for uh, Pop OS 1910. We'll click the start uh, select rather and uh, select uh, that as well. Keyboard layout it's on English, like default there as well. Select that uh, and um, select the default here for input language and English keyboard layout. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to do a clean install and uh, click uh, install there, clean install, and then select the hard drive and uh, erase. Okay, here I'm going to encrypt the drive for drive encryption. And so I'm going to choose a password uh, here in a moment uh, to give it. I usually don't encrypt the hard drive. I'm going to do that this time um, because I do intend to put this on bare metal. All right, so I'm putting a password in now and uh, confirming that password. All right, they match. And so now I'll set, uh, set the password. And it's started its partitioning here. Um, and uh, this is going to take a while to actually do the setup and everything. Uh, it's partitioning the drive first and then it's going to start pulling down the files and uh, expanding those and doing the typical setup procedure that you uh, are used to seeing in an installer. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and so I don't have to, you have to sit through all of this. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and come back when it's done. Thank you. Okay, so it's uh, completed its uh, installation and I'm at the restart device. I'm going to go ahead and do that, click that. And uh, we restarted uh, Pop OS uh, now. Uh, and um, so let's uh, wait for it to come up to the uh, 
screen here for there we go this is the screen that we get for the encryption uh, and let's go to put in the password here to decrypt the hard drive and it says it was successful so I did put in the right password so my hard drive now virtual hard drive is decrypted and it's ready to continue the setup process after installation Um, this process does take a while, uh, not too bad. Um, I'm finding it to be quite uh, quite a, a good process here uh, on this in particular installer. I think it's a great uh, installer. And um, so Pop OS is, is a System76 uh, distro of Linux developed by System76, um, as I said, based on Debian and Ubuntu. So it does use the Aptitude uh, Package Manager. All right, so I'm still waiting for it to come up now to the uh, uh, the rest of the install process, the setup process rather. All right, so it says welcome to Pop OS, and I get the welcome screen. Let's click next. Uh, here it's uh, telling me the keyboard type. I'm fine with that. Click next. Um, I've got location service turned on. I got the time zone correct, being uh, New York EDT. That looks good. Click next. I'm not going to worry about connecting my online accounts at this point, um, but there they are. And so I'll click uh, skip that. And now about me. So I'm going to put in my name, Dan Calloway. My username I'm going to change to Data Pioneer, which is what I use. And click next. Password I'm going to put in for the user account, and then I'll confirm that as well. And click next, and it says it's ready to go. Start using Pop OS. So I'm going to click that and start using it. Okay, so we now have to wait until uh, it uh, initializes everything, sets up the account. Uh, and then we'll get into the review portion of Pop OS. All right, so here we are. Unleash your potential. We're at the uh, the uh, default desktop screen here in Pop OS. Okay, I decided to go ahead and restart uh, Pop OS um, to get a clean install and uh, to show you on the review. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm out on my VirtualBox 6.0 Manager. I'm going to click the Start button and go ahead and relaunch uh, Pop OS uh, 1910 here. And so it's uh, coming up now. Uh, let me click, hit the Enter key here on the keyboard. And let's go ahead and boot up Pop OS 1910. All right, so I'm at the screen to decrypt the drive. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if I put in the right password, that was successful. So it should be decrypting, and we'll get up to um, and get in to uh, Pop OS 1910. And we'll take a look around. I'll give you a tour what we have here. Um, I have done a full system upgrade uh, since the last time that I was in here. I've done the upgrade, so now we we are good to go as far as the upgrade goes goes and um, I even changed the desktop wallpaper as well did a couple of other things so you didn't have to walk me uh, watch me do walk through that alright so we're at the uh, login let me go ahead and click that and put in the password and hopefully it'll come up to the full screen 1920 by 1080 which is the widescreen monitor It's booting up now. All right, so it's going to come up. All right, here's my current wallpaper for Pop OS 1910. Um, let's take a look at it. Uh, here we've got up here the panel at the top. You've got the date and time, and we have the activities. So I select that and come down and select the application here. You can see that we have the application menu 
Got calculator, calendar, contacts, files, uh, Firefox web browser, Gary, HTOP, Office, Pop Shop, Settings, System, Terminal, uh, Text Editor, Utilities, and Weather. Okay, so let's take a look at HTOP and see what we have. And so we are currently uh, uh, doing a load here of 2.18, uh, 1.15, and 0.44. We've got 134 tasks, 302 threads, and one running here. Memory looks pretty good. Um, not bad at all. It's about 40% uh, of the full memory allocated, so that's not too bad. So let me go ahead and close it. All right, let's come back up to activities here and select it. Let's go down to the web browser and select that. Uh, I like Pop OS because it's very uh, clean, it's very uh, responsive. Um, I like it for that purpose, and uh, so far I haven't had any problems with it. This is a new version for me. Um, I'm familiar with the, uh, I believe it was the 1804 version actually. All right, so let's take a look. Let's go over to the pancake and pull it down and look on the help and about Firefox and see what version we're running. It looks like we're running version 70, 64-bit, uh, which is the latest version uh, from Mozilla Firefox for Ubuntu, Canonical 1.0. Uh, this is a Firefox browser designed for Mozilla. All right, so very good. We got the latest and the greatest here. Let's go ahead and close this and come up to activities again and come down to files and um, here's the uh, file manager okay and so let's go out and look at what we have here I think it's probably Thunar um, if I'm not mistaken um, it could be something different and I thought this was going to tell me the version that we're using all help um, hmm I have known image view, viewer and that kind of thing here, character map manual. It doesn't really tell me the version or what uh, what I'm using here. I thought it would. Uh, about files. There we go. Uh, 3.34.1-stable. It just says files, um, so I'm not really sure. It's not Thunar. And so this is designed for Ubuntu, uh, whatever it is. And so it, looks, it still looks good. Um, under other locations, let me click there because I do have, yeah, I do have Open Media Vault set up as a virtual machine and it is running at the moment. And right now I have a, a several shares uh, activated and uh, here they are Open Media Vault RAID FTP, uh, Open Media Vault SMB CIFS, uh, SSH, uh, and so they're all represented there as well as my WD, my cloud, personal cloud and my Raspberry Pi. All right, so um, looking good. Uh, let's see, if I click on that, there there are the shares. I've got the private share, the public share, and the public underscore terabyte for the physical one terabyte hard drive. If I click on the public, double click on it, and open it up, it says connect as anonymous, and I should be able to connect as anonymous on that, I believe, and there we are. And so that, there are the files that are out on the public share, um, accessible by uh, the users internally um, uh, out on the um, public share for Open Media Vault. All right, so very good. So let's close that. Let's get back out to activities and come down to the terminal and open up the terminal here. And I'm going to uh, type in uname R to see what version of the kernel we're running. We're running 5.3.0-19-generic. Uh, if I do a df-h, it's telling me that uh, this is the breakdown of the drive itself. Uh, I'm only using 20, let's see, SDA1, I'm using 45% the boot sector, 23% of the uh, dev mapper uh, data dash root, okay? All right, very good. And um, let me go ahead and exit out of here. Okay, let's click on activities again and come back down to the applications. Let's go over to um, the settings, click on that, and when that opens up we'll get into the settings and take a look around there as well. So it's opening up now. And here we go. Here are the backgrounds that are available and there's quite a few of them. Um, and I've got this one right here set up now. But you've got all these to select from. So you've got quite a few 
to select from here. Very nice. Um, for uh, let's see settings, we've got the appearance. So let's go under appearance. I've got the dark theme activated. You can activate the light theme, but I I prefer the dark theme, so that's what I've got it set for. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to show you about uh, Pop OS that I didn't notice in the last version here is if I select a particular background that I want for my wallpaper, um, I can select now whether I want to set it for the background, for the lock screen, or for both, uh, which is not something that was available in the previous version of uh, Pop OS that I used, which I think was 18.04, but I'm not absolutely sure. But I think this is a recent change to Pop OS System 76. All right, and so I'm going to leave it where it is. And uh, so under notifications here, you can do archive manager color, date and time, desktop sharing, disk usage analyzer, Eddy for installing um, things you download from the web. You want to manually install. Eddy will do that for you. It's turned on. Files, Firefox web browser is turned on. Firmware, Geary, network is on. Power and printers is on as well. Um, you've got search functionality. You've got region and language here. So it's using the English, obviously. Um, devices here. Um, we've got the orientation is landscape resolution is 1920 by 1080. Refresh rate of 60 hertz and the scale is 100%. That's uh, uh, HIDPI daemon is uh, enabled. Okay, mode is enabled as well. All right. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back out here and uh, we've got Bluetooth. Uh, it's not set up. I don't have a Bluetooth set up in the system here. Um, all right, so let's let's close this and. Let's Okay, I want to get back here to the terminal and um, see if GIMP is installed. And so I'm going to do a sudo apt search GIMP and put in the password. I can put in, I can type. And let's see if GIMP is, uh, yep. All right, let's look and see. Uh, it does not look like GIMP is installed. And so let me get up to the top here of the screen. And it looks like the version of GIMP is this one here, 2.10.8-2. And so let me go ahead and install it. So let me do a sudo apt get install GIMP. And go ahead and install GIMP. Uh, it says, no, it says it is installed. All right, so let me exit. And let's go out. And uh, let me get to type search and put in GIMP again. There it is. Okay, so it is installed. And let's bring it up. And um, here we go. GIMP 2.10. All right. And uh, bring it up to full screen. And there we are. I don't think I have anything to show. Uh, to open up here, actually, no. But anyway, so this is GIMP fully installed. Let's go ahead and close that. And we left off, I believe, uh, under settings. Um, we've got sharing, sound, power, network, and devices, and details. Uh, of course, the online accounts uh, that we saw earlier, we can set up if we want to do that. All right, let's go into activities and let's go back to look at the office. And we have a full office suite here, uh, LibreOffice. I will probably install uh, OpenOffice or some other um, version because I'm not I'm not that uh, swift on Libra. I don't particularly care for it. All right, so let's uh, show the applications again. And we have system, and under system. We have disk usage analyzer, disks, input method, language, passwords, power statistics, startup, and system monitor. Um, and then uh, what else we have? Text editor and utilities. And so utilities, we have the archive manager, character map, document scanner, document viewer, eddy, as I mentioned, fonts, 
help screenshot text info image viewer USB flasher which is a to create a USB flash drive and videos alright okay so this has been a quick review of um, pop OS 1910 um, and uh, over here I didn't show you this this is the for network connectivity here I'm wired connected here's my audio and here's power I'm gonna go ahead and power down and so this has been a quick review of Pop OS 1910, latest release. Um, go ahead and grab it. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up for the video. This helped you. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. And so this has been um, Pop OS 1910. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.